my name is Gabriela Georgieva and I'm the Special Education East teacher of BSS. I started working this academic year and um, it's been a great journey so far. Um, I support children that have some kind of learning disabilities or just need some kind of additional support uh, so that they can become a part of our community. Uh, I also have a photography club where I work with first and second grade and we have had some amazing projects so far. Um, this is like part of the creative aspect of my job even though there is like a lot of creativity in, in all aspects, I think in general in education. Uh, my journey as an educator started in uh, 2016 uh, when I became an English teacher but uh, since my classroom like ever since I started, uh, it's been very diverse. So I decided that I wanted to study psychology in order to understand my students better and to, to know how to support them in a more, in order for them to grow as individuals. Mm. So it was something very random actually. I was just looking for opportunities how to travel because I've always been interested in different cultures. Uh, so I learned that it's very easy to teach English abroad. Uh, and I obtained my TFL certificate, which is like teach English as foreign language uh, in Peru. And there I worked uh, both with children and with adults. And um, I didn't expect that I'm going to like it this much, but it's just like a very nice dynamic. And uh, you get to know people very well. Um, and I just believe that education gives you opportunities to grow and to, to remain curious throughout your whole life, which is something great. So after I finished with my courses, part of my bachelor's in psychology, uh, I decided that uh, working with children with special educational needs is like a good mix between my love for psychology and my love for education. And um, I just... Um, I just signed courses for uh, becoming like a special educational needs teacher and uh, I think it's a, it's a great mix between uh, my qualities um, and my qualifications. Like I think I can uh, really support children. Well, what I would say is very important for me is because I, I, when I was a student I, re I didn't really like going to school. And I felt like I was missing out this adult that can just see me as a person who has uh, great qualities. And uh, I just felt a bit lost throughout the, the whole um, educational process. So I thought that I would really uh, be able to provide this to students, to become this person that they can come to and they can be very open about their insecurities, about their needs and I can communicate it with the rest of the teachers so that they are able to understand them better and to know how to support them from then on. So I would say that um, teachers, uh, I would say that uh, in BSS teachers uh, have a very individual approach so they really pay attention to uh, how students um, learn how they interact with other students. Uh, I would say that whenever they see some kind of a sign that uh, mm, they have difficulty to socialize or like to fit or they feel insecure participating within the subject, uh, they they contact me or Miss Ellie and uh, they, they ask us to observe how the child interacts and how it fits within, uh, within the whole class. And if there is some kind of uh, Mm, difficulty of the child and it's not like just their character. Uh, when it comes to learning difficulties, uh, it's like a big spectrum. So when we talk about learning difficulties, they can, uh, we can talk about uh, some kind of difficulty with socializing, some kind of difficulty uh, to participate in class or just in general the child cannot keep up with the material. So depending what the signs are, uh, I can go and observe the class and just communicate with the child and see uh, whether it realizes that it's struggling. When it comes to uh, learning difficulties such as dyslexia, uh, children are very well aware of the fact that um, they cannot function the same way as their peers. However, um, since they're very intelligent children, they just need the right approach in order for them to keep up with the material. So for instance, uh, if we talk about dyslexia, let's say, 
uh, we can provide uh, with audiobooks, we can, we can give some extra time and then we can create uh, some kind of uh, individual plan that follows their strengths and uh, focuses on their strengths. The whole idea, whenever we have a child with learning difficulty, it's very important that uh, we cooperate, the adult part of this dynamic. So when I say that, I mean parents, teachers, and uh, the support team. And it's uh, very important for us to be on the same page. Uh, I completely realize the fact that many of the students spend much more time with us than they spend with their parents, so we, we have a very influential role here. However, uh, the habits that we are building here within the school is very important they, they to apply at their homes. So, for instance, if we uh, try to convince a child that uh, um, has difficulty concentrating to, to uh, use schedules, to have some kind of uh, visual aid provided throughout the day so that they know what is following next, it's very important this kind of thing to be also part of his, his or her, her life in their house because uh, if we cannot communicate it with um, and we cannot act together uh, then we are very inconsistent and we don't give like a good example to the child and it gets confused what what is helping me out what is working for me they just uh, it's difficult for them to follow what i love most about my job here in this particular school is the fact that uh, i really feel like i'm part of a community where the communication uh, is very clear and we have like very clear expectations and uh, just like parents are very responsive, they're very open-minded and uh, ready to support. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's been a great journey so far and uh, whenever... And I'm very excited about future opportunities and future, um, like, even more technological ways of supporting children.